Um, I would just like to say that I would have written Dave back. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Things could have been different. But anyway, um, so I'm also from Michigan. I know we have some Michigan people here tonight. Yeah. Go blue. Okay, anyway. Um, so I, did I just lose half the audience? Okay. Um, so I grew up in Michigan too, and I'm an 80s kid, and I had a hobby in the 80s, uh, watching romantic movies and uh, following everything that Molly Ringwald ever did and looking for my true love, Jake Ryan. Uh, yes. 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 And if you don't know who that is, leave. Okay, so um, so I had some unrealistic expectations about love and I'd never been kissed, but I know that when you get kissed, you need to have a marriage proposal and like things that show commitment, like I'm going to buy you an island and stuff. So um, it finally happened for me in a very romantic place, the Ford Motor Company Auto Show in um, Boston, Massachusetts. I went with my parents to Boston, Massachusetts. And this is what happened. Uh, August 21st, 1988. Mom and dad introduced us to two boys, Todd 14 and Ryan 11. I fell in love with Todd and he fell in love with me too. We were together and like he put his armor on me and we snuck away from the others and we went down to the game room and we sat in the pole position. That's a game. Uh, <laughs> and then he kissed me, real, real French. And it was like, it was my first real, real kiss. And then I felt like I've never felt this way forever. And Todd is five, six and strong. <laughs> Next morning, Todd called me and our families went on a big bus together and we sat in the back row and we held hands and then he gave me his Ford pen and then he and I sat together and we shared a kielbasa sausage. <laughs> And then when we were alone, he put his arm around me and he kissed my neck and et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> and later we went to the mall and we saw the movie Big and Todd and I sat alone and he kissed me in the movie, et cetera. And <laughs> <laughs> He was so gentle, and he would whisper things like, I love you, and don't leave. <laughs> and then I would like melt in his arms. And then when we left, he went to the window and Todd and I looked at the city and he said I was the prettiest girl in the world and that we would be together forever. <laughs> and then he said we were gonna get married and he was gonna buy me an island in Jamaica. <laughs> I told you, I told you. <laughs> Todd bought me a bracelet and then he took me to breakfast and he tried to buy me a Garfield doll, but I said that was too much and I would not let him. <laughs> You don't want to be like a pretty woman, you know? So anyway, <laughs> next entry. Today was our last day together. We went to the hotel window. We looked out at the city. We were both upset. I could tell. I could not stop myself from kissing him. And we kissed, 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 and et cetera. <laughs> He whispered to me, you're a great kisser. And then he said, we got to his floor and I looked at him and I started crying. And then he looked at me and said, don't. <laughs> and then he gave me his sunglasses and he left me and he walked away and I saw a tear in his eyes. August 27th, I came home to Michigan and I was miserable without Todd. I wanted to hold him, I wanted to kiss him. And then he called me and Kimmy came over and he told Kimmy that we were getting married and that he was gonna be with me forever and that he broke up with his girlfriend in Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> and we were together forever until our phone bills came because back then, oh, like long distance was 25 cents a minute. And my, four, my phone bill was $495. <laughs> So we got grounded and broke up. And so, <laughs> but I'm no quitter, okay?
Okay, so I moved on because I was like, I need to find more men that would be interested in me, and the only place to find them is obviously in musical theater. And so. <laughs> The Sound of Music, Northville High School. <laughs> There's this hot guy, and his name is Jay, and everyone loves him, and he's a junior. He's Rolf. You guys know Rolf. Rolf <laughs> he can have any girl he wants at any minute, and I worship the ground he walks on. <laughs> he actually started talking to me, and he said to me backstage, you're the cutest frosh. And then he said he wants to put his arm around me. And I go, no, I hate being cute. And then he said, you're a hot, sexy freshman. And I let him. And then I just... Because <laughs> I had boundaries. Anyway, um... And then I just died in his arms. And then he started blowing in my ear, etc. <laughs> Friday, January 14th, Jay actually put the moves on me and I loved it. We sat on the bed backstage. I don't know why there was a bed. <laughs> and we had our arms around each other and I was wearing my nun's habit. And I, <laughs> I was Sister Bernice. Okay. <laughs> And he said all these sexy things back to me, and he said that he went backstage to the dressing room and I was sitting on his lap. Um, and then there's no et cetera after that. And then so the next day I wrote, Jay is so sweet to me, he wanted to give me a ride home. And we pulled up in my driveway and I go to get out of the car and then he grabbed my hand and then he looked into my eyes and then all my dreams came true. He kissed me softly and then more and more and more. And then we laid down in the seats of the car and we were kissing heavily. And then he said that I was the most best kisser in the whole wide world and we were all over each other, but he did not feel me up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the song came on and the words were so true Alone With You Tonight by Ario Speedwagon <laughs> and Love Bites by Def Leppard cause it does <laughs> we pulled up in my driveway at 11.30 but I didn't get in my house till 12.45 <laughs> but he didn't fill me up remember that <laughs> I love Jay so much Saturday, Jay was flirting with me a little and I sat on his lap backstage again and then I found out that Jay had a two-year girlfriend and I went home and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried. I got a ride home the next night from Carl, Jay's best friend, and he has a blue Conquest car. It rules. <laughs> next day, Jay found out I was crying and crying and he told Nicole he was really upset. So then he came back to me backstage and he says, we have to talk. So then he says, he hangs his head really low and he told me he felt really bad about his actions and he was totally serious. And then he said that he really liked me so much and he never wanted to hurt me. And we talked it out and we decided to be best friends. <laughs> and then as he was walking away, he said, don't ever let anyone tell you you're a bad kisser. <laughs> And then we went to the after party at Jay's house and his girlfriend was there. And at the end of the night, Jay goes to me, I could give you a ride home. And we were so close and I looked him right in the eyes and I said, I would, but it would be too risky. <laughs> so Jay drove me home. <laughs> We pulled up in my driveway and then we started kissing and kissing and we fell to the seats and then we were kissing the best and we couldn't stop and about a half hour later I looked up through the fogged windows and Carl was standing at the window <laughs> in my driveway and Carl said hey Jay why don't you stop at my house on the way home <laughs> and then Carl walked away we caught our breath and Jay said Dang, I could kiss you all night. You're the best kisser. Do you see the theme here? <laughs>
And then I said, we can't do this. And then he whispered, I didn't mean to break your heart. And I said, it mends. <laughs> <laughs> I lost myself in his arms one more time and I said see you Thursday and then <laughs> I couldn't sleep at all because I love Jay so much so Monday I go to the bus stop and Carl is there waiting for me and Carl kept asking me out at the bus stop and he would not take no for an answer and he wanted to know why Jay and not him and all I could tell him was Carl I'm hopelessly in love with Jay your best friend <laughs> He offered me expensive gifts, flowers, anything, even a ride to school in his blue conquest. <laughs> and he finally goes, all I ask is for one kiss. And I said, no, Carl, goodbye. I love Jay forever. <laughs> Wednesday, Amy said that Jay was crying in the lunchroom and he was sobbing and it was about me and he had to leave school. Thursday, <laughs> Jay offered me a ride home again. And I said, I shouldn't. And he said, but you should. So, we rode in his car, Buick Century Gray. <laughs> he came over to my house. My mom made snacks. And then we started watching MTV. We talked and MTV. talked. And then he said to me, I'm really torn between my loyalty of two and a half years and my instincts. And I said, do whatever you think is best, Jay. And he kissed me more and more and more, etc. And then he left. And he chose his loyalty of two and a half years. Jay and I were not meant to be. But um, in the spirit of celebrating what has happened, if you remember Todd, my 14 year old, he did promise to marry me and he did promise to buy me an island and things went, happy endings are really good because Todd did buy an island. He also sold his software for $150 million and married a girl named Carrie, not me, who's an NFL cheerleader. And um, <laughs> I just got a picture from Todd's wife of his island. <laughs> And I'm single and I'm here with you. So everything worked out. <laughs> really